really annoying. Okay, now that I remembered exactly what it is I'm supposed to be doing, let's go again in three, two, one. Hello, the internet. Matthew here, and welcome to another heroic episode of Two Minute Stories that are actually longer than two minutes. I have with me a literal hero. Uh, this is Will Beck. He is a member of the FDNY and also an astounding individual, if you couldn't tell by that introduction as it is. Uh, he's one of the uh, top helicrackers in our office and an astounding human being. So uh, I was lucky enough to get him on for his two-minute story here with us today. So Will, thank you very, very much for being here. The floor and the internet is yours. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me on, Matt. Well, where to begin? I'll try to keep it under uh, a lot of time, but uh, just a little, <laughs> give a little bit about myself. So, yeah, please. Um, so yeah, originally um, going, you know, going through college and stuff like that, I ended up going to um, working for Homeland Security uh, for TSA. So I was actually one of those blue shirts over at the airport. I used to patch it down. Oh, God. Tons of story about finding knives and bombs and and drugs and what name and actually uh, patted down a couple of celebrities too. I'm not going to name anybody. No, um, but yeah, I was actually going for a law enforcement uh, position. So I was going for like secret service, um, FBI, ATF. All right. So I was going that route and I even got my uh, master's degree in Homeland security through Penn state all online. So a lot of people don't know I have that, but um, I was, um, uh, in the transition of going through the steps, I actually went through everything for secret service and I was in the middle of being called for that. Um, but they had a break in over at the uh, white house and they had to put a hold on recruiting. So I was like, like, Oh, put a hold on that. And in the meantime, I got hit up by the FDNY. Now the FDNY was the dream job. It was always a dream job. I fell in love with it when I went for, um, when I went to military school and I had, uh, firefighting training um and i fell in love with firefighting right there and then so i was like yep i'm for it i'm all there so i went to the academy did my uh, close to four and a half months and i became a full-fledged firefighter which i still am today mm -hmm. um i ended up going into uh ladder four right there in manhattan um within a couple and i said no this is manhattan i'm 28 years old i'm gonna hit the town i'm gonna new york city fireman and i'm gonna live it up uh, a couple weeks later, I went to a wedding, and lo and behold, I happened to ask somebody to dance and ended up meeting my wife. Uh, so it was pretty it was, it was pretty cool to do that. So it was like, if you got a chance, uh, go to a wedding single because you might meet your wife. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> best place to do it. So, um, and she worked at Harley Davidson, and we, got, and we were dating for about two years. And it came to a point in our lives where we, you know, we saw ourselves going uh, together, taking it to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to move in together. Now she was working for Harley Davidson and she kind of reached the threshold of where she could go. She, you know, reached, um, she asked for a piece of the business and, you know, she got turned down. Said so the owner was like, nope, this is all for my kids. I don't want anything to do with you. You know, you're going to keep you at your salary level. She's like, I got to find something better. So just by chance, a friend of hers introduced us to a new business, and we got, she fell in love with it right there and then. Boom. Mm -hmm. uh, the, she's like, I'm getting out of the, where I am right now and starting up with this. I was like, okay, no problem. Um, but I, she's like, okay, I want you to be a part of it as well. But I was like, ah, you know, this isn't for me. You know, I don't think this is my deal. I'm a fireman. I don't want anything to do with it. But I wanted the educational side. And what I wanted to learn, it was like how to better myself because when I went to the academy, like after filling in all your W-2s and stuff like that, I was copying off the guy next to me. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So I wanted to clear that up. So that's what kind of brought me into it. And I was super skeptical, didn't want anything to do it. I was like, ah, this isn't for me. But after sitting down with Joseph Martins, who is our um, senior director or also known as our, the broker in the business, mm -hmm. um, he put me on the right track of how to hone in my, uh, my retirement and getting all my finances and, um, and my debts in order, mm -hmm. which was amazing because I was all over the place. Right. So after doing that and seeing like, um, you know, I could actually do uh, some of this because I knew a lot of people that needed help as well, including my own family. Um, it was great. I fell, you know, at over heels for the, the business and jumped into it about like about a couple of weeks later um, with, uh, with Andrea, my wife. And, you know, happened to get my license within a month. I was like, no problem. I could do this. And, you know, two and a half years later, here we are right now. So I can't say, um, you know, I'm really happy to where we are right now. And, and um, I don't know where we would be. We probably wouldn't even be married right now if it wasn't for the business and for the people we met along the way. Because not only does it help you um, financially, but you grow uh, your personal development. I don't hang a 
around with the same amount of, uh, same group of people. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the old saying is you're the average of the, you know, uh, the five people you hang around with. So in order to step up my game, in order to get out of my, my, uh, my normal life of playing video games and drinking on the weekends and spending a ton of money at the bar, um, I wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. So, um, reading, you know, first was like reading a lot, going to events and then surrounding myself with people that were, you know, kind of like vibing at a different uh, level. And I got that from Ed Milet. So I definitely guys check that out if you can. Um, and he's one of the field chairmen, but he's also a great motiv motivational speaker. Yeah. So I'm influenced a lot by him. And, you know, over through time, I just personally developed myself. And now I moved out of the house. I changed my habits. I don't watch that much TV anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a different person uh, because of that. And I'm proud of who I am. And um, I don't have to uh, worry about what other people think of me. And that kind of helped me back a lot in my life because I was always worried about, you know, who, you know, who I needed to impress, who I needed to make happy. But I never focused on me about who to make happy, which is me first before I can help others. But I mean, you know, I'm a helpful person at heart. So I'm always uh, there for those who I care about. But uh, like I said before, this is one of the great things about the business and it just makes you elevate yourself to another threshold and get you to where you want to be because, you know, I can't find any other, anywhere else that will do that for you. So, um, you know, like I said, I'm really happy where I am now. I'm happy to where I'm going. I used to didn't think about that. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I have goals that are three years, four years, five years, 10 years down the road. I'm thinking about the house, the trips that we're going out to, the cars they want. This allows you to do this allowed me to dream a lot more because I was like, you know, tunnel vision. I was a fireman. Boom. This is all I wanted to do. But I tell you what, this is going to be my exit strategy because I tell you, I worked a ton of hours and then we don't, we don't get paid that much, but this is going to be, and we live in New York, things are expensive. Yeah. So this is going to be something um, that's going to carry me on to sustain not only my life here, but my future family's life here. And we're going to get, you know, get to build the dream home of our, uh, of our dreams and live in Long Island and it's going to be it's going to be a great time. So I'm happy uh, to share that with you guys. And I hope that, you know, transcends and, um, you know, you get an idea of where we are right now, where we're going. So I hope Dude. that, you know, hit it right on the nail. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's and there's so much. And, uh, you know, my company, my my whole channel, the whole brand is all about the hero's journey. And, you know. It's funny listening to your story. You had a lot of like twists and turns. It's like, okay, yeah, I'm going to. You, you had this dream to be in the FDNY, but you kind of put it aside and like, oh, I'll go into law enforcement. And then you know, you you start at the TSA, which I mean, I don't have to fill in that gap. But yes, that yes, led yes, from yes. one thing to the next to the next, and then it ended up bringing you to your dream job. But then it wasn't. You, you, you needed more you need and it was so amazing is people look up to uh you know emergency service workers uh military uh all these great heroes like yourself and they think okay you know like that's the pinnacle of what a, a person a man should be and yet you still held yourself up to a higher stamp and i'm going to go out on a limb this is going to be my one question is I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you're always going to be holding yourself up to that higher standard. Will you ever get, say, okay, I've arrived, or is it always going to be like another threshold, another threshold? What's nah, it like for you? It's always another threshold because I'm never satisfied. And, um, in your after, development, you mean? Uh, yeah, I'm never satisfied with my development. I, can know, I just know in my mind that I'm like, I'm so much more and I want to accomplish so much more. Like, um, I got a lot of heroes that I look up to, and one of them is like Theodore Roosevelt. You know, about the guy. I love the guy, you know, I mean, talk about somebody who's done so much in his life. So I'm like, I'm like chasing somebody, but I'm chasing somebody who's like, you know, years ahead of me, but I'm also chasing myself that are year, years ahead of me. So I can always do more. I can learn more and I can help a lot more people. So that's why I, I just, I can't stay stagnant and I'm not one but like to sit around because I just can't do that. One, I can't sit still um, unless I'm like reading a book, but I want to keep moving forward because I know there's so much more to accomplish. Yeah. Will, thank you so much. I'm very, very grateful for your time. Now, if you guys want to know a little bit more about Will, about what he does, about the business we keep bragging about here, uh, then you're going to have to check out the description on the YouTube channel for this video. You go down there, his business website, his Instagram, whatever else he feels like sharing will be there. Of course, I'm going to tag him in the Instagram video for this uh, as well. Well, thanks again for being here. This has been another great episode of Two Minute Stories that are longer than two minutes with Matt and Will. We want to remind you all, 
Level up. <laughs> Catch you in the next one. Thanks again, right. buddy. Thank you, Matt.